show you my necklace it's a little opal cloud how cute is that see so cute I really 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 love it so my voice is a little hoarse because I just came from a conference where I spent like three days in a row talking and so um, I'm like oh, sorry everybody <laughs> program on your phone uh, we recommend radar scope it's yeah. a very very good radar they issue those right before they put watches out. So if the cap is too strong, you won't get any storms at all, and you have a bust. No storms fire. And then if the cap is too weak, you have too many storms fire at one time, they fire too early in the day, and you get all these storms fire, and they just all compete for the air mass, and then the whole day washes out. Storm scale rotation, which all supercells have, their whole storm's rotating. Two to six miles or wider within that storm is rotating. But then you have low level rotation, we call low level mesocyclone. That's where your tornado's dump belt from. Stars align and you're there and you made the right forecast and everything comes together and you're there to witness that right there. There is no better feeling on earth than seeing a tornado from close range. Okay, we finished our meeting. I got a little bit of footage from there. Um, we are going to dinner right now, but we got a t-shirt. So I'm gonna show you guys the shirt. Nice, right? Isn't that fun? I love the color. I'm gonna try to functionally pack my bag, repack my bag and get some sleep because I am tired. I th think they said tomorrow, they don't expect there to be a lot. It's gonna be more of a travel day, but they said the rest of the works, week's looking pretty good, which when I was looking, to me, it didn't look that good, but they know a lot, like they're a lot, <laughs> they're a lot smarter than me about this stuff and like the forecasting and they have like more resources. So I'm going to go with what they were saying, which is that it looked like there's some stuff that could be exciting and let's hope, let's hope y'all. Good morning, guys. So today is our first day of actual storm chasing. I'm going to get ready. We have storm shirts. I'm gonna wear them. Oh, I'm actually up earlier than I needed to be. I just realized that I should have slept in. <laughs> it's okay. We're gonna meet in like two and a half hours. And so I'm gonna get my camera bag ready, repack my other stuff. Today I need to like make like a camera equipment backpack that I can keep on my lap in the car. And then like I have like 
my Peak Design. If you don't know who Peak Design is, they're this amazing camera accessory company. Their products are, like I'm using their strap right now. Their products are top notch. They're amazing. So anyway, I've got their, their little like do it all like pouch thing and it's so cool because you can use it as like a strap like like over the shoulder you can use it across the body you can even make it a waist pouch like so that's really cool that's the thing I'll wear <laughs> I'll have that on when we get out of the car but I need a camera bag so I have like my lenses and my batteries and my chargers and things like that so that's what I'm gonna do so yeah so let's get this day started woohoo Hello friends, I wanted to show you what I'm bringing today. Uh, we are having a chase day today. So I've got my Nordis backpack and this is a really great backpack. This isn't specifically a camera backpack. This is a traveler's backpack. Uh, if you wanna look up the brand, they're amazing. And they've got lots of like compartments and lots of places. So they're very versatile. And then I have got my Movo camera cover, rain camera cover. It's the, they're a little, I think it's the junior because I have a tiny camera, so. That's what that one is. And then I've got my anchor. What is this? The Power Core Elite 3 is I think what it is. Um, this one's really, really powerful. can charge a lot and it can charge things at the same time and keep up a really fast charging speed. I've also got a, a very fast like lightning cable in there that I got just so I could charge things quickly. Um, I have got my little travel size night core. It's got a little built in. USB thing here so I can charge my camera batteries if I need to. I have four camera batteries though so I should be okay. Also my camera can charge directly with a cable into this but you never know right. Then this is just my waterproof SD card holder so I've got extra SD cards in places to keep them safe. I have got the it's new-ish the Hoya HD3 filter. It's a really amazing filter. I don't really think I'll use it today but I've got it just in case and then I've got my basic filters like UV and um, oh, and, oh, sorry, this is a polarizer, forgot to say that. Anyway, um, got, got basic, a three set of basic filters in here. I have got my little basic kit lens. Um, you know, it's not the best lens, but it's tiny and it's a good, if I'm just going to be doing a, uh, like kind of a quick vlogging type of thing. Sometimes I just use this one because, um, it's just so small and it makes it easier to vlog with and uh, it's still good. You know, if you know what you're doing with your camera settings, it's still a good lens. Plus this one stabilizes better. So it's just whatever, it's a good backup lens. And then I've got a lens hood, some obviously gonna have cables out the wazoo. This is my Peak Design do it all something. I don't remember. This is um, the small, their small size. I think it's a three liter uh, bag is what this is. I love it because it's so small, but it's still big enough to fit my camera, a bigger lens and some of the accessories and then everything else will sit in the car in there. So that way it's still lightweight, super uh, versatile and I can reach into it really easily, which is perfect. And then this is the stuff that goes inside it. They have these really cool inserts. They're kind of like origami. So look at this. You can like fold them and do different shapes and have like layers and levels. It's really cool. And then this strap also goes with it. Uh, I might not be using this today though, depending and if I need it or not. Uh, these are just a lot of cables and things. I'm not bringing those. And uh, yeah, then this is my Sony ZV-E10. Yes, I was able to find one, which is amazing. So I've got this and then I've got the uh, now kind of infamous Sigma 1850 to 50 millimeter. And this is the one that's got the fixed uh, 2.8 f-stop, which is really incredible to be able to have that across no matter like what uh, I'm shooting at. And so uh, it's a really, really amazing lens. Look at how small it is to get what you get with it. I mean, this is amazing. If you are curious about this lens, go and look up reviews on it. Great price point, incredible lens. It doesn't have a stabilizer on it, so you're gonna wanna be careful. Use a, you know, use something with a gimbal or just, you know, kind of know what you're doing. Try to hold it steady. You can also use the Catalyst brow, like the Catalyst now. Um, oh, you know what I'm talking about, the little, Sony has a program. It does crop in a little. You can also use the camera stay in body like stabilization, but it's gonna crop in too. But if you're filming something that you don't care, you can do that. Otherwise, just be careful, you know? But besides that, this lens is awesome. Okay, and I think that is it. I forgot that I also have this little defogger. These are great for lenses and stuff. Reed Action Jackson, look at my camera setup. I already went through this in a vertical setup so I could do it to Instagram. So I will also use that for this video because I don't want to refilm it. I'm going to get dressed. I'm going to finish packing my electronic backpack. I'm going to put a few personal things in there like my headphones and um, some, uh, you know, whatever stuff. <laughs> and then I'm going to gear up this 
camera bag's gonna be super light. I might even put it in the waist mode so I can like put it around my waist, which is awesome that they even thought of that. Yeah, no, but I do watch it every day. I'm looking for, uh, for a final end.
It's not, it doesn't go far enough out yet. So this ah, okay. so this only goes through one o'clock Thursday afternoon, and that's the end point of this particular model. So now if we switch to uh, the NAMP model, which I know Eric has showed you uh, quite a bit, and we'll try to get an idea of what it is showing, which I know it's favorable as well. This would be tomorrow evening, afternoon and evening, and actually when I showed you guys this model earlier, and I kept mentioning Sioux Falls, you might be remembering, mm -hmm. it's pretty much showing the same thing as it did earlier when I showed yeah. it to you early yeah. this afternoon. All those bright Skittle-like colors around the Sioux Falls area. Disturb the MCV moving wow, up. Whereas that first model I just showed you a couple minutes ago, the H Triple R, yeah, that one separates. had the warm front way, 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 way much further north. So the NAM has the actual warm front further south, and it better interacts with that MCV or that disturbance that's moving up across the area. So actually, that would probably be a more, you know, volatile situation overall. Points there. Temperatures tomorrow, well, well, well up into the. Uh, 80s here. And you can actually see that warm front a little bit better now. You can see the cooler temperatures to the north and the hotter temperatures to the south there. And then if we switch over here and look at instability, you can kind of see how that instability really sharply cuts wow. off right at that warm front too. You're looking at 5,000 wow. uh, worth of cape there, instability right along that warm front right there. And then if we looked up to the, uh, the mean layer or the mixed layer, instability you're looking at close to 5,000 in this little pocket up here as well so it's very uh, very unstable that is lapse rates that's that temperature change with height that we've talked about a couple of times see this really dark uh, orangish reddish color here those are very high lapse rates they're even up to nine degrees Celsius wow. so that's like extremely high so that tells you you probably see some pretty big hail tomorrow if the thunderstorms develop in that area uh, a lot of lightning production with the high moisture content and the high lapse rates. Those type of storms really produce a lot of lightning. Lightning uh, would be a little bit concerned about the HP supercell potential yeah. uh -huh. because when you get those high lapse rates and especially the high moisture content, they like to be a little bit HP um, in the flow aloft, the jet stream aloft. Yeah. See there's other stuff going up to the south of it. So. Yeah, part of them should be friendly. If we start seeing a mezzo in the next scan or two, it's oh. on.